Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at atom economy. Now this is just going to be the, the introductory maths towards atom economy. If you want some questions that expand on this a little bit, like why might something not have 100% atom economy, what can we do to improve the atom economy, then that is all going to be found later in the playlist where we put this skill into context in some larger exam style questions. Here we're looking at atom economy. So before we try these questions, let's have a little recap of what formula we need to be able to calculate these and what it actually means. So atom economy can be calculated using the following equation. So we will see that atom economy is equal to the total MR of your desired product. And the question will always tell us what our desired product is. And then we'll divide that by the total MR of either all the products or all the reactants. So long as you're consistent, it's absolutely fine. And then we will times it by 100. And that there is how we calculate the percentage atom economy. And all the atom economy is, is it's a measure of the proportion of reactants that end up becoming useful products. So let's have a look at how this works in practice and how we actually can work out these questions. Let's have a look at question one. So looking at question one, you can see we're told that the desired product of the reaction is titanium. And if you look at the balanced equation, you'll see that there's just one mole of titanium. So the MR for that is just going to be equal to 47.9. And that number you'll find on the periodic table as the atomic mass. So now we need the MR of all of the products, or you could do all of the reactants, it will give you the same answer. So here, what we will get is of course that 47.9 of the titanium, but then we've got four NaCl's, so we're going to do four times the 23 of the Na, plus four times the 35.5 of the chlorine. So we'll put that all together in the calculator, and we end up getting 281.9. Now that is the MR of all of the products. Now, if we just remind ourselves of the equation for atom economy, we know it's equal to the MR of your desired product, and then we divide it through by the MR of all of the products or reactants, and then we finish it up by timesing it through by 100. So putting those numbers in then, we get 47.9 divided by 281.9 times by 100. And what we end up getting for the answer to that, to one decimal place, is 17.0%. So here for question two, what we have is a cracking reaction. And we're cracking C7H16 into a bit of pentane and ethene. We're told here that the desired product is ethene, and so we need to work out the atom economy of this reaction. So starting off here, let's work out the MR of that desired product, the C2H4. So we know that carbon has an MR of 12, so two times 12, plus four times the one for the hydrogen ends up giving us an MR for the ethene of 28. Next up, we want to get the MR of all of the products. So that is the ethene that we've just already worked out, so we can write 28. And then we want to add the MR of that pentane. So we've got five carbons and 12 hydrogens. So if we work this out then, we end up getting that 28 plus 72 which gives us 100 for the MR of all of the products. Now let's scribble down our atom economy formula, which is the MR of that desired product divided by the MR of all of the products. And then we times that through by 100. So in this case, that is going to be 28 over 100 and then times by 100, which gives us simply 28%. So here for question three, 
we're told that the desired product of this particular reaction is NH3 and we're asked to work out the atom economy of this reaction. So first let's work out the MR of the ammonia, which in this case we're told is our desired product. Well, notice here that we have two NH3s. And that's a very important thing to notice because we do need to include this in our calculation of the MR of the desired products because we need to take into account that there's two of these. So we've got two times the 14 plus three times one, which ends up being two times 17 or 34. That is the MR of all of the ammonias that we have made in total. Now to get the MR of all the products, well, there's only ammonia as the product. So the MR of all the products is simply 34. And this makes working out the atom economy really simple. In fact, you could argue we didn't even need to do it because it will just be 34, the desired, over 34, the total MRs, times by 100, which is just 100%. And if we go back and look at our actual formula that we're given, you can see that we've only got one product. And in any case where we only have one product, we know that it is 100% atom economy. So now we're told that we want to find the atom economy of this reaction here, where the desired product is H2. So the important thing to notice here is if we look at this formula, is that we don't have one H2, we have three H2s. So we do need to take that into account in this calculation. So that means the desired MR is going to be three times the H2. So that is three times, two times one, which will give us six. Next up, we need the MR of all of the products. So that is going to be obviously the six of the three H2s plus the MR of the CO, the carbon monoxide. And that will be 12 plus 16. So tallying that together, we have six plus 28, which gives us 34. So, Reminding ourselves of our formula for the atom economy, that is equal to the MR of the desired products divided by the MR of all of the products, and then we times it through by 100. So in this case, that is going to give us six divided by 34, and then we times it by 100. And that gives us an answer equal to 17.6%. So the final question of this little worksheet asks us to find the atom economy of this reaction here. So we know here that the desired product is magnesium hydroxide. So we need to work out the MR of that. And you can see on the balanced equation that there's only one magnesium hydroxide. So the MR will be 24.3 for the magnesium, plus 2 times 16 for oxygen, plus 2 times 1 for the hydrogen. And that all totals to 58.3. So now we know the MR of the desired product, we can work out the MR of all of the products. So we already know that one of the products, the magnesium hydroxide, is 58.3. So then we want to add on the two NaCl's. So we know we have two times the 23 for the sodium, plus two times 35.5 for the chlorine. So now that we know this, we can tap it away into the calculator, and then we can get the MR of all of the products, which is going to be 58.3 plus 117, which totals 175.3. So we can use all this now to get the atom economy. So the MR of the desired product over the MR of all of the products times by 100 is the formula we need to use. And so looking at our workings from earlier, we can see that that is going to be 58.3 divided by 175.3 times by 100. And that there will be how we work out the atom economy in this case. 
So putting that into the calculator, we get 33.3% to one decimal place. So there you are, that is atom economy. I hope that is making a lot more sense now and you've got a good idea how to work these out now. Ouch! This is why in some videos I write explain scratches. <laughs>